Recently, we reviewed the Vizio Elevate soundbar, and that thing was pretty incredible. It gave you legitimate Dolby Atmos surround sound, but it came at a price. Today's soundbar system is way more affordable. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and today we're reviewing the Vizio M-Series 5.1 soundbar, which offers virtual Dolby Atmos and DTSX at a very accessible price point. But did they have to cut any corners? How does it sound? We're gonna find out. Before we jump into it though, have you experienced Dolby Atmos in a home setting as opposed to like a commercial theater? And what did you think? Is that something you want in your life? Leave me a comment about that down below. And of course, like and subscribe to support the channel. We appreciate it. And as always, we've got affiliate links to the products that we review down in the description. Thanks a lot. Let's do it. What we're looking at here is a very understated, one might even say boring looking soundbar, and that's a very good thing. It doesn't call attention to itself, and it shouldn't. You should hear it, not see it. So I think that Vizio did a good job of making it kind of disappear into the room. It's got a smooth charcoal gray finish, and it comes with the soundbar, as you see here, which is about 36 inches wide. It packs six drivers, so that's gonna be three sort of midwoofers and three tweeters. Uh, one, two, three channels there. And then you get two surround speakers with just sort of that mid-range driver built into them, no tweeters there. And then of course the subwoofer here, which is cute, but it also has a pretty robust six inch driver down at the bottom. Let's swing around the backside of the soundbar really quick where it's really simple. You've got a power port and then you've got an auxiliary input port, which you could use for a smart speaker so that you could control the system and get audio from that smart speaker out of it. And then you've got two HDMI connections. One is for plugging a single device into the soundbar. I'm not sure how practical that is anymore. And then you have an EARC port. Yes, indeed, this does have EARC. Kind of need that for the Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So that's really impressive at this price point. On the back of the surround speakers, you'll find an RCA port. That's how it connects to the subwoofer, which gets the surround signal wirelessly. And then above that is a little screw hole that you can use to mount the speaker. Now, if you're at all familiar with the Vizio soundbars, then you know that you get everything you need in the box. So let's take a look at that. I love how organized Vizio makes this. Uh, everything's really clearly labeled. You've got two power cords, one's longer than the other. So if your subwoofer is further away from an outlet, you could use it for that if you wanted. Uh, you've got two surround sound speaker cables, RCA tips. Pretty lengthy, these guys. Then there's an HDMI cable. Now, I wanna mention EARC does work on this, but this is not probably an HDMI 2.1 cable. So if you are going to be doing uh, Dolby Atmos or DTS-X high bandwidth stuff from say an Xbox Series X console, you would want to replace this HDMI cable with an HDMI 2.1 cable. Enough about that. Remote here, we've got an optical uh, cable here, a couple of Velcro zip ties, interesting. A couple of analog cables, you could connect your smart speaker with those if you wanted to. And a really classy move, they've actually included wall mounting hardware for the surround speakers. Now there are actually two different setup scenarios you can go with on this particular soundbar. One is a conventional setup where you've got the soundbar up front, you've got the two surround speakers positioned just behind you and to the left and the right, and then the subwoofer is back there with the surround speakers because it's getting that surround signal wirelessly and then powering the surround speakers. The other way you could go is have the two surround speakers flank the soundbar. And this is really handy for people who don't have a lot of room for an elaborate surround setup. That also allows you to place the subwoofer toward the front of the room. And Vizio claims that in this particular arrangement, it's still gonna pull off some pretty impressive surround sound effects. Getting everything set up is pretty much just plug it in and after that, it's automated. Turn everything on, everything will sync up and connect and you'll be good to go. Now, I don't think that folks are gonna be putting these in massive cavernous rooms, but it's true that if you get the subwoofer too far away from the soundbar, you could have some signal drop out and that kind of manifests itself as a popping noise. So if you get something like that, keep in mind something's probably messing with the signal between these two components. Like the Vizio Elevate, the M-Series 5.1 surround sound system has a pretty comprehensive control system and it's all controlled with this particular remote control. There's a little guide on the back of the remote in case you're confused by what you see on the little LCD screen up top, but it's actually fairly simple. What I like most though is that you get complete control of the surround levels, the subwoofer level, and there's a fair amount of EQ options as well. Okay, so that's enough about how it works. Let's have a listen and talk about how it sounds. I'm here to tell you that this surround system sounds great. 
Like it has no business sounding this good for its price. It's pretty stinking incredible, even for Vizio, which is known for turning out some pretty high value sound bars. So let me try to explain why it sounds so good. My go-to for Dolby Atmos surround sound soundtracks is always going to be Mad Max. I know it in and out. I know exactly what to expect from it. I've heard it at its absolute best. And while this system doesn't pull off the Atmos trick all that well, as just a general soundbar surround system, the fidelity is fantastic. The surround effects are contiguous. Like the swirling surround effects at the intro of Mad Max really have a way of going around you. And if there's any holes in the sound, you're gonna hear them. This was a perfect circle of sound. Not only that, but the blend between the surround speakers and the surround bar was excellent. Perhaps one of the most notable aspects of this surround sound demo is the narration at the beginning. The voice is very deep and it's very gravelly. And if your system relies very heavily on the subwoofer to make that happen, and there's not a good blend between the soundbar and the subwoofer, you're going to hear the voice coming from the subwoofer. And in this case, that could be right behind you or right beside you because the subwoofer sits towards the back of the room. There was no attention drawn towards the subwoofer in an undue way at all. Again, the blend between the soundbar and the subwoofer is super smooth and the subwoofer is not being asked to do too much so it doesn't call attention to itself. You know it's there though. It's definitely a pounder. I mean, for a six inch sub, it's pretty impressive. It's not a super high end sub. It's not really punchy necessarily, but if you wanna feel like you're sitting in a theater in the comfort of your own home, this system absolutely pulls that off. Now with a lot of sound bars, I hear other pitfalls, like the treble is far too sharp. Not the case here, it's perfectly balanced. Maybe the dialogue gets muffled. Not the case here, it's perfectly clear. Sometimes the mid-range is just kind of muddy down in the lower end, and it's just a jumbled mess. Again, not the case here. Everything is very clear and well-defined. Now, sound bars aren't really known for being musical, per se, but I did listen to some music and it sounded great. The fidelity that you got out of the movies translated well to music listening as well. When you have good fidelity, you have good fidelity. Now there's not a lot of instrumental separation and the soundstage isn't super deep. I mean, this is not an audiophile product. It's not gonna compete with a dedicated music system. The bass is nice and rich. I feel like instrumental textures are really good. I mean, it's, again, very respectable. I think people go into budget-friendly sound bars with managed expectations. I mean, as long as it sounds better than the TV speakers you've got, it's probably gonna be okay, right? This is far beyond that. This blew away my expectations, and I think it's gonna surprise you as well. Again, if you're looking for an experience that's fairly close to a movie theater in the comfort of your own home, this sound bar is a knockout. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Were you as surprised by the outcome as I was? Leave me a comment about that down below. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.